Anyway, let's go. Oh wait, hold on a moment. We have to hit the the we have to hit the clock in order to get the time trial started. I forgot about that. Okay, so yeah, this is basically the the time trial. Obviously, we just have to beat the the level within a certain amount of time. When you're doing this, I would recommend not going for anything. Like, I mean, I guess you can go for lums if you want, but they don't really have any purpose outside of um, outside of getting the electunes. So. Like, I wouldn't bother if you were just trying to go for the best time. There's two goals for each time trial stage. There's the Electune goal. There's the Electune goal and the metal, the, the trophy goal. So if we beat the state if we beat the time trial within a minute and thirty seconds, we will get the Electune. But if we beat it within a minute and two seconds, we will get the trophy. I think the trophies are just for an achievement. But, we'll see. Yeah. So, when you're speeding through, these levels are actually pretty short. Like, again, we're nearly at the end already. And I'm pro- Looks like I'm not getting the- The- Uh, crap! No, I'm dead. I think if also in the time trial versions, if you die, yeah, you're sent straight back to the beginning. So, yeah. You know, this game does not mess around. Let's try it again, though. I did say I would- I did say I would beat the, the time trial, so we're going to do that. And maybe I'll suck less this time, and we'll be able to... Maybe we'll be able to get the trophy, too. Because the trophies, as far as I can tell, don't do anything other than... Then give you an achievement. In the versions of the game that have achievements. I'm playing this in offline mode, so I don't even think that I'll get an achievement if I were to pick one up. <laughs> um... And if you're playing on the Wii, you're not... Or the 3DS. There's a 3DS version of this game. I don't know if there's a Vita version, though. Um, if you're playing on the 3DS, for sure. But if you're playing on the... If you're playing on the 3DS or the Wii, you're not getting any achievements. So, yeah. It's mostly just for, uh, like, bragging rights at that point. Ugh. Okay, come on. We can do it. Um, one small thing that I that you can do to improve your time is, um, well, just in general, it's helpful for general platforming as well. You can use your attacks in the air to, um, you can use your attacks in the air to kind of stall yourself like that. And also, when you land, if you're running and you, la you land and press the attack button to do, like, that kind of running dash, you'll kind of speed your el yourself up temporarily, and it's pretty cool. You unlock new characters as you go, but they all control the same, so I'm going to stick with Rayman for the time being. Uh, maybe after each world I'll change my character. I think that's a decent idea. So anyway, let's go to level 3, Punching Plateaus. Like, hold on, let me show. Like, you run, jump, you get a- you go to top speed much quicker if you attack as soon as you, like, land after a, a jump or something like that. It's pretty help- it's pretty helpful, and you're going to be using it a lot once you get to the- once you get to the really hard levels in the game. And let me tell you, once you get later on in the game, the game doesn't just get hard, it gets brutal. Like, this is probably one of... The, uh, Rayman 1 is infamous for being an obnoxiously challenging game. I, like I said before, I've never been able to beat it. Um, this game, I don't know if it's quite that hard, but it gets close. I mean, I've been able to beat it, so... Like, I guess... That doesn't necessarily mean it's any uh, easier than Rayman 1, though, because, like, I was also, like, what, 8 when I first played Rayman 1? So, yeah. I played the GBA version. I know that that version, actually, I believe, is easier than the PlayStation 1 version. I think that you get more health in that one. Although, you're also, like, in the GBA version, you've got massive screen crunch, like many other ports for that system Many ports of games for that system had the smaller screen size problem. Like, Mega Man and Base is a big one. Uh, I, Super Ghouls and Ghosts on GBA also had screen crunch issues. Um, so yeah, there's that handicap. And considering how tight the platforming is in that game anyway, you're going to be dealing with... Um, you're going to be having some problems. <laughs> you're going to be having some problems. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, you generally don't need to attack too much, like physically attack like punch enemies too often in this game sometimes it's advantageous too but most of the time i find myself jumping on enemies anyway 
Unless if I'm just trying to plow through. So it, it kind of depends on the enemy I'm facing. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. You can get all of those uh, Electoons in one. Not Electoons. Those are Lums. Sorry, I get my terminology mixed up a lot. If you followed anything else that I've done on this channel, you should know that by now, though. Uh, but I want it. Okay. Ow! Oh, crap. Okay, so... Yeah, one thing that I've gotten into the habit of doing in order to try to maximize my um, my LUM score is I try to pop every bubble I I make. And it's just, it's an extra one LUM for every enemy you kill. And it might not sound like a lot, but it is damn near necessary considering how tight some of this stuff can get by the end of the game. So, I would recommend doing it if you're having a hard time re reaching certain LUM totals. But that's just me, personally. Loading? One thing I love about this game is that the loading is generally pretty quick. Especially upon death. Like, you are back into the action really quickly. Oh, crap! No, 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 no. I'm dead. Yep. Okay, yeah. All water is not deadly in this game. It's mostly just in gibberish jungle. Where the water will try to kill you. And your family. Whoa! Ah, damn it. Okay, I missed the skull coin. And the skull coins really are kind of necessary to making lum totals. So, again, I do that a lot. I kill myself in order to uh, in order to get a second tr try at lums all the time in this game. It's, it's part of why I, I think it's kind of genius that they allow you to do that, really. Like, again, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know? Like... Yeah, you can reset the, the level to get something that you missed. And they totally let you to do that. And I bet they kind of expect you to do that as well. But they also... But, you know, again, if you, like, finally get that tricky skull coin. And then you die on something easy. Later, you have to get it all over again. So, you know, there's that... I, I just... I love how this game does it. This is probably, I think... If you wanted to make a challenging game, I would model the challenge off of... Rayman Origins. I think that this is one of the best ways to make a game challenging but fair. You can try as many times as you want. It's going to be hard, but you can try as many times as you want, and eventually you will get it, and once you do get it, it'll be satisfying. There's no arbitrary being sent back to the beginning of the stage or, or God forbid, to the beginning of the game, you know? Even Ghosts and Goblins doesn't make you go back to the very beginning of the game if you run out of lives. So, yeah. Um, anyway... Um, you see those bubbles on that flower over there? That means that, this is one thing you learn to notice eventually. If you see those, those bubbles around something, that means that you can jump on it and it will reveal something. In this case, it revealed a King Lum, but sometimes it'll reveal a Skull Coin, sometimes it'll be a Heart, sometimes it'll be, like, um, Lums, usually. So, but you just, you learn to notice those kinds of things as you play. Um, again, it's so easy to get lost in the, the visual detail, and it's also very easy to not notice the visual detail. You know, it's also, like, when you're playing the game and you're focusing so much on the platforms and all that and whatnot, it's actually very easy to just not notice how beautiful the game looks. Like, just take a moment and look at this. Like, look at that adorable pig thing over there. I never noticed that before. I don't know if you ever did, but I certainly didn't. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, come on. There we go. Oof. Getting those big bu bunches of lums when you have um, a king lum going is very important. So, anyway, uh, you might be thinking, oh, no. How do I get to that skull coin? I can't reach. Well, if you do down an attack in the air, you do a slam move. And if you do that on a bouncy thing like that spring, you'll jump up higher. That's going to be very important for getting through the game. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's pretty much ne necessary to do to do that once you get to the later parts. Not just to get stuff like skull coins, but to just well, a to just beat some stages and b finding hidden electoons. You'll have to do that a decent amount as well. Woo! There are faster ways of breaking the chest, but I just didn't feel like it that time. Yeah, hump the air, dude. Uh, one thing I really want, like, one th I know that they exist, too. I want Rayman's sweatshirt. I don't know where to buy one, but I really want it, because it's just, 
One, it's really cool. And two, it's a relatively kind of subtle geeky thing that I could wear around, you know? Like, I like those kinds of things, you know, the sorts of shirts and whatnot that you could wear and walk around. And everybody, it's not like you're wearing a shirt with, like, the Star Wars logo on it, you know, where it's just like, oh, that guy likes Star Wars. It's something where you could walk around, people would be like, oh, that's just a normal shirt with a circle on it. And then somebody, if you walk by them and they know Rayman, they'd be like, that guy, that guy likes Rayman. And, yeah, it just it seems really cool. Alright guys, you ready to go with the flow? Also, this game, I think, does the backdrop, you know, all in silhouette stuff. I think it looks better here than in Donkey Kong Country Returns. Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of that game, but I can explain why later. Because I want to talk about a good game at the moment. Um, I'm always so weary of going through these levels too fast, because I always think I'm going to miss something. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. In some ways, the, the platforming in the early stages is a little bit more intense than once you get later on in the game, because soon we're going to be getting the ability to have a little hover, and that'll allow us to correct our uh, mistakes a little bit easier. But for right now, we can only jump. And that was actually very similar to the original Rayman as well. In the original Rayman, you had you did not have the ability to, um, to hover right away. You actually didn't even have the ability to, like, punch early on. And I mean, it was like that for this game too but like you get the ability to punch within like two screens in the first rayman game like you could go like the first 15 minutes without even the ability to attack or to run or to hover or anything you are very weak when that game starts and actually hold on a moment i just noticed something okay i noticed that alcove i was wondering if they had hidden something in there but anyway in the original Rayman, you were really weak when the game first started off. And, like, obviously that's the point. But, like, damn, you know? I really should go back and try to beat that game one day because it is just... I played it two ways. I played it on the Game Boy Advance, like I mentioned, Rayman Advance, which, from what I remember, is a pretty decent port. But there's also, um, there was a DSiWare port, and... That version was okay. I noticed a lot of compromises that they made to get it on the system, though. Like, a lot of music, it wasn't that they were missing tracks. It's that tracks were about half as long as they should have been. And that really annoyed me. So, if I'm going to play the game again, I'm probably going to play the game on uh, PlayStation Network, I think. Because the PS1 version is probably the version that is the best, if I had to guess. I think there might be a Saturn version of the original Rayman as well. Um, I'm not sure, though. I'll have to look it up, but I'm going to play one of the original releases of that game if I ever get around to playing it again, because it is one of those games that I do want to kind of, like, check off of my bucket list, you know? I have played a little bit of Rayman 2. Um, the, that's the 3D game. It's on, like, everything. <laughs> you can play Rayman 2 on your toaster. Um, and I'm not even joking there. There probably are some toaster operating systems, because, like, electronic toasters exist now. And so there probably are versions of ver there probably is a PC version of Rayman 2 that can run on a toaster. So yeah, but Rayman 2 is on literally everything. I played a bit of the PlayStation 2 version, Rayman Revolution, and it was fun. Um, I just I never beat it though because I was playing it at a friend's house, so I was never able to like I was never able to see the entire thing. I could always go back. I could always go back and try to finish it one of these days, though, because it was a really fun game. And it is one of those kind of landmark 2D... Uh, not 2D. It was kind of one of those landmark 3D platformers, along with stuff like um, um, Mario 64, Tomb Raider, um, Crash Bandicoot. It was one of the big 3D platformers. So, big early 3D platformers, I should say. So, oh, Skull Coin. I don't know if I knew that that was there uh, before. Well, we'll see. Ooh. I also noticed that there's a elf down there that I probably missed. Oh, well, no problem. I, if I had tried to go back over to there, I would have probably just gotten hurt anyway. If you pick up a heart when you already have a heart, you get a free five lums, which is great. But if I'm just going to lose a heart to get a heart, it's a waste of time. So, yeah. Uh. Okay, so I wasn't able to pop any of those bubbles, but, like, whatever. We got the we got the Electoons, and that's all that matters. So, the quickest way I've found to break open those chests is to slam into them. 
Uh, you can just standard, like, punch, 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 and your final punch will go through and hit the other lock. I believe you can also charge and then punch, and that'll break both locks at the same time, too. But slamming's just the quickest way, so... You know, if you're impatient like I am, I would recommend doing it that way. Okay. Um, there's a skull coin over here. Yeah! Okay, come on. There we go. See, that's another example of the... Um... Crap. We are not getting that skull coin in time. Good thing that there's a thing here for me to kill myself on. And then I can try again. I do this all the time. If you're going to get sick of me doing this, I, I recommend not watching the playthrough. Uh, but yeah. What was I saying? I really do not remember anything about what I was talking about. Oh, I missed the, the other skull coin because I have to go get it again. Crap. Oh, no big deal. Whoop. Whoop. The platforming in this game is just so goddamn fun. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Like, there. That was me using the air stall to um, to get to that, um, to get over there a little bit easier. Because I was having some trouble reaching it with the uh, with just my standard jump height. But just that, like, extra half second in the air from kicking is sometimes just the little bit of extra uh, length you need in order to make those things. And you really start to notice that if you play, like, the challenge mode in Rayman Legends. Like, in that mo in that game, you're going to need to use that in order to get, like, the best times and whatnot. There we go. I'm doing pretty good on lums, you know? Normally, it it's probably usually the later games, the later parts of the game where I have more trouble with it. It, may it might just be because I played through these early levels so much, so much, that I can't, um, you know, maybe I'm not going to say I can't mess up because it's usually the easy stuff that you do mess up <laughs> in a playthrough like this. Uh, but yeah. Uh, come on. Yes, I know you love those lums there, dude. One thing that I am not a huge fan of for this game, because again, the art direction across the board is fantastic. I don't like the redesign for the magician, making him just a kind of a standard teensy. I don't know, I'm just not as big of a fan of it. Whereas, like, the Rayman-like design, where, like, in Rayman 1, they had all the Ray people and whatnot, I... Like, I mean, granted, like, the TCs, they were just trying to keep the game consistent, and I'm okay with that. 